Hey, I'm Janosch from Janosch Workspace and this is a six part series on Loom, the popular video collaboration software. You'll find the link to the entire series in the description down below. And now let's jump right into the video. In this video, I want to show you how you can work inside of the Loom Workspace efficiently and how you can easily collaborate with others. Let's get started right away. So inside of your Loom workspace, if you're using the pro plan, you will have this library. And this is where all your content that you have created using Loom will be. And um, you can take a look at it in many different ways. And I'll show you how all of these ways basically work. Uh, first of all, you will be on the videos tab. And this is just a list of all the videos that you have created inside of Loom and that are actually created by yourself. So they will be filtered by created by me. Um, and you can also filter them um, if they have been posted to your team's workspace. That's something we'll get to later as well. Um, now, if you go over to folders, um, this is where you can actually create a folder structure for your videos. And that's awesome if you have you know, multiple videos that are related to one specific topic, or in general, if you have lots and lots of videos and you want them to be organized in a certain way to make it easier for you to navigate them and to you know see um, where you have to actually get the work done. Now, in order to move a video into one of your folders, um, you can just navigate to the video that you want to move, go to the More Actions tab, and here you can click on Move. And then you'll get a, a list of all the different folders that you have. And you can basically, you know, navigate to wherever you want. So if I want to say this is part of my uh, courses, um, courses folder, uh, I can just click on courses, or I can also navigate into the subfolders of courses by expanding this toggle over here and then going into further, uh, you know, sub uh, folders inside of this courses folder. But for now, let's just add it to the courses folder. Let's click on move and then this will be added to the courses folder. If I go back to folders now, to courses, now I'll see that this video is in here. I can also easily rename the course, so I can just go in here, click on rename and say um, some video, I don't know, uh, this is just random. But I could also go in here and duplicate this video, so I can just create a copy of it and that will just you know, copy this video. Um, in some cases that might be useful, for example, if you want to um, have two videos, like the same video uh, edited in two different ways um, for different purposes, um, that's where this comes in really handy. You can also easily download any of the videos that you have inside of your workspace, um, either by clicking on the video and then in the single video settings, going up here and going to uh, download. But you can also do that uh, from the previous page. So if you go back to the library and then go back to folders, go back to courses, um, I can also just click on this button over here and click on download from here. If I want to create a new folder, I can just go up here and click new folder and then say I want to create a new private folder. Um, you can also create team folders, um, but they can't be created inside of a private folder, which uh, is what Loom is telling us here. So that's why I can't do that in here, but you could do that if you have a team and you're not inside of a private folder already. And now let's just create a new folder. Um, let's just say test, so this is our test folder. And now I could also use that, you know, put videos in here. I can also drag them over here as well. Uh, and now this video is part of the test folder. So if I go back in here, I'll find this video over here as well. Lastly, videos can also be archived. So if I don't need a video anymore, I can just click in here and click on archive. And then, then this video will actually be sent over to the archive right here. So now you see this video is inside of my archive. If I don't want it to be part of, as part of like my main uh, structure anymore, um, and I don't need the video anymore, but I also don't want to delete it, um, that's a great place uh, to put those videos. Now, as we covered in the previous video, a great way to actually collaborate with other people instead of Loom is to use the comments and to basically answer to Looms with reactions or even other Looms. And I quickly also want to show you how this works. So if I have uh, you know, this video open and I basically, I got this link from somebody else in my team or from some other person that uses Loom, um, I can actually just you know, go in here and add a, re a reaction like this. So I can say, I love this one. Um, just say, my name is Janosch. And then this reaction will be added or sent to the person that actually uh, created this video. Um, and you can actually see there's this reaction from here, from me over here at the beginning. I can also add a comment. So if I click on the comment section and I just say, well, um, let me let me comment at a different point in time. So let me just go over here and pause it right here and comment over here. Let's say, this is a great idea. 
and my name is Janosch and let's comment at this point in time. You see this comment is added here as well. And again, the person that actually created this video will be able to see it and to review it and to answer to my comment. And now lastly, what we can do is record a comment as well. And this now you know, works in this way where you actually you know, record a loom yourself. So you can, again here, just, just start recording. And let me just, you know, do this like quickly um, so that you see how it works. So I'll just, you know, do a really short recording here and let's finish the recording. And now we'll just quickly process that. And then it will be added as a comment inside of this loom that we just created. So let's say this works, uh, works fine. Do a release. Let's insert it over here and um, we'll just delete that. Uh, we'll just post without an account. Let's just say our name is Janosch again and we'll comment over here. Perfect. So now, as you see down here, this gets added to this comments thread and we actually see you know, where we commented and we see what the response actually was. People can watch this and um, this allows us to really um, co communicate in a really nice and understandable way, but do everything asynchronously. Now, since the new redesign of Loom, there are actually a couple of additional features for teams that are really, really helpful. And I can't show you all of them because I don't have a team account, but I want to tell you what they are and how you can use them to collaborate inside of your team. And the first one is that you can now post videos to the general workspace of your company. So um, by, by default, videos are private. They are just, you know, for you and only you can see them. Um, then you can share them with others, but you can also make them public so that anybody in your company Company can see them and the way this works is if we go into any of our videos so let's say this uh, some video that we have been working with all the time um, let's click on post over here and now this is actually marked as posted so it will be part of our workspace um, and if I now you know filter by posted to your workspace you'll see that this is one of the videos that was posted just to this uh, team workspace. Now again, this makes the video available to everybody inside of our team that is using Loom, which is great because now we can basically reuse knowledge that we already have inside of our company um, by providing you know video instructions for things once and then everybody else can basically see them and uh, search for them um, to find things out and we don't have to do everything uh, 10 times basically. You can also create different tags and therefore organize these videos by different tags, which makes it even easier for people in your company to discover new content or to, to discover uh, you know, videos that were created by others in their company. And you can do that as well by going to the video and then below the actual video, so down here, um, you could add a tag. So we could tag this with, um, I don't know, um, tech um, or we could tag it with um, courses. I don't know, things like this. And now these tags will be you know, added to this video. And you can also search for these tags inside of your workspace. So up here you can search for tags. Um, let's say I want to search for courses. Uh, and now you see, you know, we have both this uh, this uh, this tag and also this folder and all the other videos that have this somewhere inside of them. Um, so now we can just go to the courses hashtag or the courses tag and we'll find all of the different courses that have this tag applied to them. The last thing I want to talk to you about is the uh, integrations that Loom has with other software tools. And one of them is the Gmail integration, uh, which allows you to basically auto expand links into visual previews inside of Gmail. Uh, let me show you how that works. So I have my video here and I'm just going to copy the link again and I'm going to go to Gmail. And in here, instead of the body, if I, um, you know, copy this link in here, you'll see how this automatically expands into this preview of the actual video. And it also adds the link here so you can actually click on that and go to the actual Loom. And this is part of the Loom Chrome extension. So without the Chrome extension, that wouldn't work, uh, but it's a neat feature, especially if you're sharing, you know, Looms with your colleagues um, and you're doing that through email, um, then this is a great choice and makes it a bit more visually appealing. Loom also has direct integrations with other tools. For example, instead of Notion, you can easily embed Looms uh, instantly without having to do some manual setup. Um, or instead of Slack, you can quickly respond to Slack messages by just creating a quick Loom. Um, so if you're using any of these tools as well, then this makes it much easier for you to you know, add this additional communication layer, which is video communication uh, through Loom. There's also a Zoom integration for Loom, or uh, at least it's coming in the next uh, couple of weeks or months. And this will basically allow you to automatically export 
um, recordings of Zooms that you have created inside, uh, like into your Loom account uh, in order to, um, again, to categorize them, to add tags, um, to edit them and to do things like this inside of your Loom uh, workspace to basically have all of your video content that you want available inside of your company uh, in one space inside of Loom. All right, that's it for this one. In the next video, we'll take a look at the different Loom recorders and we'll also see, you know, which of them is the best suited for which type of uh, recording. Um, so you always use the best uh, recorder um, for your needs because they do have some differences um, and we'll go through them uh, in the next video. So stay tuned and I'll see you there. Bye.